We're in the Capitoline Museums in Rome, and we're looking at this gorgeous little sculpture, this bust by Gian Lorenzo Bernini. Well, it's uh, not really little. Her head looks life-size or maybe even slightly larger, Yeah, no? Yeah, no, it is. You're right. It's, it's bigger than life. But I guess after looking at the massive Marcus Aurelius... <laughs> oh, that's true. It, seem, it seems small it's not, to me. It's not, right. It's a, it's a bust. But you're right. It's larger than life, and it's of Medusa. So yeah. this is a Greek myth. She was one of the three Gorgon sisters, as portrayed by the Greeks, as a monster who had hair Made replaced snakes. by snakes. Yeah. Right. And here they're writhing. And whose and gaze turn. turned men to stone. Is That's that right. right, yes. And in fact, when Perseus beheads her, he uses the reflection in his shield so that he can attack her without having without to look. Without looking at yeah. her. And yeah. she, you know, in the 19th century, comes to represent a kind of femme fatale, dangerous woman. That's right. Woman. That's right. But here she's depicted so sympathetically. It, it may be the only time I've seen her less as a threat and more as almost a kind of victim. She's so Baroque in that she's making this expression that looks very momentary. We've caught her uh, making this expression on her face and, and this captured sense of time. Because of the realism of the face and this expression, it makes you, like, I, I want to make the expression on her face mm. of opening my mouth and pushing my brows together and up. And as soon as I do that, you get this feeling of being very vulnerable and frightened yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah. She's terrified of herself right. here. That's yeah. right. And to imagine what it must feel like to have those snakes writhing around your head and always. And have anyone who looks at you turn to, turn stone. to stone. What a, a kind of lonely and terrible existence. And these writhing snakes that Bernini has left rather raw uh, compared with the polish that he's depicted her face with. It's true, he's really smoothed the face. Mm -hmm. um, so it's got this brilliant kind of sheen, on the, especially those lips, which yeah. almost look wet. So this yeah. tension between the monster that she is and, in a sense, the humanity that, that suffers from that. And the light and the shadow because of the drilling and the depth of the carving of the snakes around her face. That's is right, also that's right, like, like Michelangelo, carving so deeply into the mouth even. There's no need to carve that deeply except to create those shadows. And then this contrast then between light and, and dark. Look at the depth of those brows, the exaggeration of the nose and the lips and the chin. And there's, there's a kind of exaggeration in is. her expression. There is, which makes it all the more powerful, all the more theatrical, all the more Baroque. The more poignant.